God's people because I have come to learn from scripture and even by experience that the only way believers mature, the only way they grow is through the sound teaching of the word of God. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 says, I will give you shepherds or pastors after my heart. And the Bible says that they will feed you with knowledge. They will feed you with understanding. So when believers are exposed to the word of God, they are empowered to number one, reflect Christ in experience. Please pay attention. Number two, they are empowered with the tools that make them walk in victory experientially. It is one thing to know the potentials that are captured in the word of God as far as the victory of the believer is concerned. But we must learn the ways of God that can make that victory written here to become a reality in my life and in your life. Are we together now? I have always challenged believers that in addition to conforming to the image and the character of the Christ, it is important that believers make progress in their lives, that you are able to look at your life and know that you are moving from one level to the other. Psychologically speaking, one of the indices that measure fulfillment is progress. If and when you are unable to make constructive progress, sooner or later, you will be frustrated. Are we together? So a conference like this is designed to help us and to lift us, to remind us, to renew our understanding, to challenge us along the lines of new thoughts. And um, i like for us to pay attention. It will be a brief session tonight, but I pray that it will be a meaningful one. In the name of Jesus Christ. Two things very quickly. Generally, there are two factors responsible for transformation it is called your teachability index number one is your willingness to learn and number two is your willingness to change these two factors are very important and they are responsible for the rate of transformation of any individual a measure of your ability to learn and your ability to change if you have a very high rate of your ability your passion to learn you are going to become very knowledgeable but if you do not have a passion to change you will become like the people in scripture who are ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth and I can tell you based on the authority of God's Word it is very frustrating to know what should be and yet not enter into the experience of it it says, now that you know these things, happy are you if you do them. Hallelujah. So as we hear the word of God, it is important that we are very intentional about number one, learning. And then number two, to allow the word of God permeate our spirits and to permeate our minds, our thinkings, to challenge our philosophies and our ideas about life until we change and we sustain the mind of christ we will never be able to experience the realities that befit the mind of christ the bible says for as he thinketh in his heart so he is are we together yes i just thought to say that because sometimes um especially in conferences like this we can get very casual about the truths that come and we just open up our hearts for the sake of the ritual of reception with no intention to really receive it as a word from God and to be transformed. It is my um, plea, therefore, lending my voice with your pastor and the leaders in this great ministry, that we open up our hearts today very and, and be very intentional that the word that is coming is not just for, for um, awareness. It is coming from God through a man to me, to enlighten me and then to empower me to move to my next level if that is true for you shout amen, amen. hallelujah praise the name of the lord and then while seated i like to speak over your life and then we'll pray as a way of um 
starting this my discussion proper isaiah 54 and verse 17 i'm interested in the a part isaiah chapter 54 and verse 17 no weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper please say amen. amen let me repeat it one more time that in the name of jesus no weapon that is formed or fashioned against you shall prosper well seated can you turn it into a prayer in one minute that i decree and declare in this season go ahead and pray this is a believing church decree and declare no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper no weapon fashioned zebra takatus kelebanda bakaruse dekete peleketa no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper no arsenal of darkness against my destiny my advancement in this kingdom and this life will prosper fortified by the word of god in the name of jesus christ hallelujah amen luke chapter 8 you are about to learn something tonight that i believe for many of us will be the bridge from the season where you are to the next season of your life and destiny in the name of jesus i truly believe with all my heart that as you open up your heart to learn finally the spirit of god will connect the dots for you and you will make maximum kingdom advancement even after tonight luke chapter 8 and i'll start my reading from verse 22 luke 8 22. now it came to pass you can look up his projected if you can see it now it came to pass on a certain day right that he went into a ship the he being jesus with his disciples and he said unto them let us go over onto the other side of the lake and the bible says they launched forth uh-huh next verse but as they sailed he fell asleep and there came down a storm of wind on the lake and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy 24 and they came to him and awoke him saying master master we perish then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water and they ceased and there was a calm and he said unto them where is your faith and they being afraid wondered saying unto one another what manner of man is this for he commanded even the winds and the water and they obey him we'll pause here please go back to verse 22. the bible lets us know that this is a very interesting you know a, a very interesting story the bible says it was on a certain day so we know that this is not a parable it happened a certain day that jesus came to the ship with his disciples before this time he had made tremendous progress preaching the gospel holding his crusades doing mighty and great things miracles signs and wonders and he desired that they go to the other side so you must understand how the story starts the story starts with a desire to go over to the other side are we together now and then the bible says they launched forth with that motivation that he intended to go to the other side so that they could experience his power his grace his salvation but then the bible says that as they sojourned certain things began to happen jesus lay to rest and there was a storm of wind and there was a storm of wind the first thing I want to say tonight is that there are times when challenges prove to you that you are getting it right. It is not always true that every challenge you face may be a proof that you are getting it wrong. The Bible says here 
that it was because of their desire to go to the other side that means if they did not take the step to go to the other side there would be no issue of storms at all hallelujah there are times that the challenges and the storms that we face in our lives it may not be true that they are because we have backslidden or because we have not trusted god enough in fact many times those challenges come to prove that we are making progress in life you would think that because jesus was in the boat a storm would not arise jesus did not join them he started the journey with them yet the storm still came if the storm came for jesus it means it should not be unusual when storms come over believers they did not ask him to join them when the storm started he started the journey with them in fact he proposed the journey the all-knowing god the all-seeing god now as a man proposes a journey did he not factor the fact where was his vision where was his ability to see the end from the beginning the psalm seems to have taken them by surprise they came to him and they said we are disappointed you are jesus where was the grace that saw nathaniel under a tree that now we are on a journey and we are faced with a storm many times just because god told you that you will go this way and you will be great when you face challenges most of us turn back as though the voice of god were supposed to magically exempt you from storms the bible here is teaching us are we making progress now the bible is teaching us that even jesus was not immune to the presence of storms if the storm came with jesus in the boat then the storm can come with to end making progress lord why is this happening to me why is my business failing why am i not excelling in ministry and we begin to ask these questions and the devil buys into our emotions to make us believe that we did not hear god and you know believers we have a very interesting way of making people feel that whatever challenges that they have before them is proof that they did not hear well sometimes challenges are proof that you heard well are we together so they began their journey as proposed by jesus himself let us go over to the other side and the bible says there was a storm of wind please look up a storm is made up of um two dimensions or two elements if i would use that expression number one is water number two is wind please pay attention it is the wind that powers the water to be boisterous you may not be able to see the wind but you can see the effect of the wind in whatever happens with the water are we together now that means that every storm has two sides to it there is the water that you can see the obvious problem that we are blaming but there is a wind that you cannot see that is empowering that water are we together now so that the issue is not just a rent issue the issue is not just a business issue the issue is not just your boss the issue is not just your relatives oh joseph the issue is not just the well the issue is not just your brothers that every storm is made of water and wind physical or visible and invisible so in confronting storms you are already in error if you focus only on the water are we together now the first thing in addressing because it, this scripture here is teaching us that it is not unusual to have storms but it is also teaching us how to triumph over storms that in dealing with storms you do not start with water when jesus manage the storm he started by rebuking the wind the force that powers the water are you getting what i'm teaching you now 
simple but powerful teaching because you see satan is the master of the sense realm and he knows that for as long as he keeps creating men and situations they will distract you and you may not know that he is the force behind it you will point fingers at individuals and the individuals may have legitimate blames but that behind every storm the real reason why the water is boisterous is the wind the water is only a slave to the wind the boss may only be a slave to a spiritual manifestation somewhere this is why the bible tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood is god speaking to us now that every time you are approaching issues of life and destiny your first port of call should be the realm of the spirit if you route it by any other agency you will fail every storm is made of wind and water please say after me wind and water So just when the Lord tells you he's ready to manifest his power and glory over your life, you begin to have a misunderstanding with your wife that you cannot understand where it is coming from and where it is going to. That is water. There is a wind that is powering that. Spiritual men don't just talk physically. They know that what is happening is as a result of destiny. The moment you begin to find confusion around your life, it is proof that the realm of the spirit has, they have heard that you are going forward. Let us go over to the other side. The Bible says, John chapter 10 and verse 10, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill and to destroy. Look at me. That means before the thief comes, he vets whether there is something worth killing what stealing that means the presence of the thief is proof you are that valuable now please understand this the thief has no business being in a place until there is treasure enough to steal treasure enough to kill and treasure enough to destroy could it be that his insistence over your destiny is proof that you are not even aware of what god placed in your own life satan can be used as a confirmation that you are valuable are you learning tonight yes. so let us go over to the other side in business let us go over to the other side in ministry the other side as far as my pursuit for god and the things of the spirit are concerned and you begin that journey and here comes the storm the storm is made of wind oh man of god hear this this may be a word for you oh businessman hear this this may be a word for you the storm is not proof that your spiritual life has gone down don't let the devil lie to you the storm the quarrel in your home right now is it's not proof that you are not faithful it's not proof many times it is because the devil wants to distract you so that you will go back i can tell you if they made up their minds to go back the storm would cease the same energy it takes to go back is the same energy it takes to continue. Whether you go back or go forward, it will still take energy. We're dealing with Luke 8 now. And then the interesting thing is that the Bible says Jesus was sleeping. You don't want a savior to be sleeping during a storm. You want a savior to be alive. But Jesus was sleeping. And you would, thought, you, you, you would think that um, as, as boys, terrors as the storm was, he, it would wake him up. Jesus was still sleeping. That means, listen, this is very powerful. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus why will jesus be sleeping in a boat that is raging left right and center he did not wake up he was sleeping it took them waking him to say master tell us not that we perish because he knew for sure that he would not perish are we together now they never said jesus wake up your life is in danger 
they said we there is something about your mentality that even the storm does not affect you we know you are fortified you have your thinking you have a mindset that would not allow storms to move you but help us have mercy on us we are still trying to grow can i tell you this there is a lesson here for everyone to learn two people were in the same storm one sleeping the other one shouting let this mind be in you sometimes you see people rejoice and praise the lord until you hear what they are rejoicing over they are rejoicing over pain they are rejoicing over disappointment the man can be singing and clapping and there are bills to the billions to pay he has received a mentality that god god's god's jealousy defends him and that there will be a way the end will be victory this is how we think in the kingdom please understand this We live in a world that is very passionate about attracting sympathy and sometimes we we tend to believe that just because we have justifiable reasons to feel bad we can throw away everything and blame everybody and get angry people do foolish things in society and justify it why did you steal well there's poverty in the country why are you not serious well there is no job but Jesus had a mentality. This is the second thing I want us to learn. The first is about the reality of storms. That it happens to all men. Including Jesus. And then number two. There was a mentality that Jesus had. Even in the midst of the storm. He was asleep. That looks to me like the scripture that says. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I shall fear no evil. Now here's the secret. For thou art with me. It didn't say for thou art talking to me. There are times that you don't have to wait for the storm to be calm to rejoice. Just verify if Jesus is there. The moment Jesus is there in the boat, begin to find rest. You can fail alone, but you and Jesus cannot fail together. If you are the only one in the boat... Even if you are a skilled man at sea, begin to be afraid. But if you check that boat and you verify that Jesus is there, even if he is sleeping or seems to be sleeping, find rest. The first reason why we find rest in this kingdom is not because the storm is over. It is because Jesus is in the boat. Oh, this is, this is a prophetic word to someone right now. I may not know how the solution will come. I may not know what to do. I'm, I'm in the middle of nowhere. I began a journey to start a business and now I'm in debt to the millions and the billions. Uh, it was because of my desire to go to the other side. The other side of my destiny. I can't remain at this level. For the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light. There are many people who do not have storms. It's not necessarily a proof of spirituality. It's proof that they are so cowardly, they don't have the courage to go to the other side. Are we learning now? It takes courage. A storm must, must be sure that you are worth its attention to come to you. Now, learn this lesson. Number one, storms happen to all men including jesus it is not unusual one of the scriptures that baffled me for many years is this statement in revelation and there was war in heaven war in heaven heaven is your throne with the all-seeing eye omniscient omnipresent there was still war in heaven notice the character of god in both cases god never stood up from his throne because of the war he was still seated at rest there was already a system put in place listen learn this rest is proof of faith rest is proof of faith you may need to prophesy to yourself say myself find rest myself find rest 
the bible says except the lord builds a house they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city said the watchmen watch it but in vain it is vain to wake up early and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he gives his beloved sleep are we together so there is a mentality that was in jesus that i'm proposing to us every time you seem to not have control over the issues in your life forget about the issues and verify in that boat is jesus there he can be there as the prophetic word he gave you he can be there as the word of god that you hold on to are we together now yes this home now it's three years five years six years we're trusting god for children and it looks like children are not forthcoming that is a storm it was a desire to raise a generation of prophets and apostles who will frontier the kingdom now a storm has come and all kinds of naysayers will be around you trying to discourage you to say go back remember what i told you the same energy it takes to go back is the same energy it takes to continue jesus had a mentality he was so at rest and they tapped him and said master carest thou not that we perish please give us the scripture verse that will be verse 23 or 24 luke chapter 8 verse 23 or 24 luke chapter 8 master he says carest thou not that we perish and the bible says do you know the bible says verse 24 is the verse and they came to him and awoke him saying master master we perish then he arose jesus never told them one word until the storm was over he didn't say gentlemen how are you just become no he turned to the wind not the water jesus addresses storms by starting with the wind the spirit the force from the realm of the spirit that brings that storm and he said peace another synoptic account says be still and there was a great calm and then he now turned to the people and said now that i'm done with the storm let me teach you something where is your faith he turns to the wind like someone is going to turn to the wind this night that it is time for me to move forward and thou storm that is standing before me manipulating things acting as though it's a financial problem acting as though it's a marriage problem acting as though it's a health problem just when they say you are about to be promoted you touch yourself and it looks like there is a growth somewhere and the devil starts telling you cancer so this is how you are going to die that is a storm it is not the swelling there is a spirit there is a way that we deal with storms jesus is giving us a lecture that you deal with storms by rebuking the wind you only rebuke what is alive you don't rebuke what is dead that means the wind had life and it could hear the force that is behind the tragedy the force that is behind that is pausing an impedance to your journey can hear and if you know how to speak as a priest that storm can be calm you don't have to bother about the water let the wind seize its influence and the water will come back to normal so the issue is not just a financial problem the issue is not just a marital problem the issue is not just job the issue is not just your destiny help us forgetting you there is wind that is making the water to be boisterous but imagine the labor they would have gone through trying to look for a container to fetch the water out one by one one imagine you're trying to fetch it out and it's coming into the boat again it would have killed them there that's how many of us try to manage challenges now 
Jesus is teaching us a lesson here that for every storm, please pay attention, there is wind and there is water. And that you can stand in the name of Jesus Christ and take authority over the wind. And you go to your office by the next day and the same boss who vowed that you must leave this office comes to you and says, you know, I've been thinking about you. Where did you say you come from? And now you know that that is water without the influence of the wind now. Are we together now?